We're back. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We're back. Good morning. <laughs> Technical difficulties. <laughs> no matter what we do, every week it's the same. <laughs> uh, We're good at that. <laughs> so jump back on here with us guys it's good to see everybody this morning there we go Michaela <laughs> welcome back <laughs> hello again hey everybody again 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 I get in trouble calling names I'm so new to this it's good and to see everybody Hi, when I look back at it I realize how many hello. people got on and I missed so Hi, Don't Deanna. say hello to everyone as they get on. Sorry. Sorry. I miss everybody so much. We were talking last Tell night about, about when we get to come back together as a church, which we hope is not too um, too far away, that we need to have a big cookout and just very, hang out. So we miss our people. Yes. We miss our peoples. <laughs> <laughs> hope everybody's doing good. Yeah. Hey, while everybody's getting on, I'm going to show you um, how I survive Corona. Number one, number one thing not to do in Corona season. I can't wait to hear this. Don't step on the scales. <laughs> Trust me. Right. <laughs> My scales have been uh, corrupted by Corona. They're, lies, lies. They're lies. Demonic. Dark forces, <laughs> spiritual wickedness in, in low places close to the ground. My scales, they be lying. But I'm telling you, this, this thing is no joke. So don't look at the scales, but there are ways to survive this thing. That might be why your scales lie. This, this. <laughs> This little area right here is uh, for a note to self. Don't forget to eat me. <laughs> I don't know if that sounded right or not. But anyway, those little jeffers right there, and, and I've made them um, homemade three times. Three times. One double batch. <laughs> Let's just be honest. He was using the excuse that he was teaching Walker. And I was. Scared. I was being a good dad. Yes. I was redeeming the time. <laughs> And so, yeah, they go great with coffee. But let me tell you what else. Michaela, these are for you when you come over today. They're not getting open. They're going home with you. The good, well, we better get into them starting <laughs> right now because that's a bunch. The good thing about it is uh, these were Easter. These were for Easter. So right after Easter, it's all half price. So <laughs> the Lord doesn't want me to waste money. Now, does he? <laughs> You see what I live with? You see what I live with? I mean, I don't want to feel like I'm losing money on the deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quick investment. It's uh, one of those high risk, quick, quick investment deals. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And everybody knows what a little Debbie fan I am. So that was just a couple of, of new guys that have made it onto mm -hmm. the team. But uh, the, the, Pantry is full of little Debbies. Well, not full halfway through. <laughs> but tomorrow is a new day. We're getting rid of all this stuff out of our house. So I want to say something. We miss everybody on to eat so much. And um, um, I, would, I had an interesting conversation with a couple friends of mine that I thought I would share. This is the first year I feel like I wasn't busy um, preparing, you know, our our service, our special music, our special singers. Um, and, you know, our kids had a program they were going to do. And uh, we're usually busy cooking for family and having company, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. This is the first year it wasn't like that. And I'll tell you, I think Good Friday hit me in a whole new way because of that because I had two friends and they were kind of um, juxtaposing their experiences. And one grew up in a particular denomination and she said, we sat in lament. That's all we did was feel guilty and how could Christ do this and I still sin and I'm still terrible. They, they really, 
partook of lament to the point where she was having a hard time finding the joy in her salvation. And I had another friend that said, we were Pentecostal. and We went right past the cross to the empty grave, you know? So it was an interesting perspective. But this year, I really felt with all the distractions put aside that I had time to really think about in a whole different way, in a really sacred and holy way, yeah. the cross. And uh, we, we observed it in very precious ways in our home last weekend. And um, it just meant a lot to me. So, you know, I, I was thinking this quarantine has brought out a lot of um, a lot of different opinions, a lot of different things. We know that for some people, it's just been an inconvenience that you've had to stay home. You've had to um, kind of be away from public. For others, it has triggered anxiety and fear. And yet for others, it has been exhausting because they've been trying to work and homeschool and do so many things. And still for others, um, it's been devastating. We know people that have had family members that have died because of the virus. So there's a broad spectrum of experiences with it. But I read something that was kind of interesting and it said, if you don't come out of this quarantine with a with a new skill, with a new side hustle, or some new knowledge, side hustle. then you basically wasted your time. That don't sound either. <laughs> you I'm basically kind of wasted your that, time, right? and you don't lack time. You just lack discipline. But I want to release everybody. Sometimes that is true. Okay, you, there are people out there that this has ignited their fire. Yeah. But if you are in survival mode and you're just hanging on for dear life, you're good. And you're okay. If you didn't come out with a side hustle or can speak Chinese or a new language at the end of this, <laughs> you're okay. And just getting through this together and having a grateful heart through it is what's important. So I just want to kind of throw that out there. I think, too, you and I were talking about this last night, that the quarantine kind of brings up what plays in the background of your life. It, you know, there are issues that were happening before this began. There were, um, it may have brought some of the more quieter issues that we distract from or that we um, have the opportunity to come out of when we're busy and when we're moving and when we're going. And it's kind of brought some of those to the forefront. And I want to tell you too, that's okay. It's okay. It's not a bad thing. God is faithful to uh, bring those things to the forefront, not to torment you, but to bring healing to you. So embrace it. Whatever, don't be frightened by it. Whatever is playing in the back for us, it's been grief. You know, we have grief playing in the background of our life um, after constantly. losing our daughter constantly. So it's kind of brought that even more to, the, it's a little bit louder, it's a little bit stronger. So whatever you're dealing with that was maybe playing in the background, it sounds a little bit stronger now, a little bit bigger. Um, it's not any bigger, it's just more in the forefront. Yeah. And God is faithful. It's like um, Groundhog Day is what I've called it. Uh, I call that my grief. I said, it's, it's, um, it's a Groundhog Day. Every day I have to deal with it. It's the same thing that I left off yesterday and I have to deal with it again. But this is something else. Um, this is like Groundhog Week, week Five, week. you know, Week Six, <laughs> whatever we're in. And I can't, I honestly just about have to look at my phone to, to remember what day I'm on the day of. What during the day? What is today? What is today's date? Uh, where are we at in this thing? Yeah. But it has uh, required uh, more balance in my life uh, because it's stripped down so many things that I don't have as much to balance anymore. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm just kind of doing a couple of things like this. But at the end of the day, we're like, okay, uh, what did we do today? Well, it was the same thing that we did yesterday. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do tomorrow? Well, the same. <laughs> we, we're fantasizing yeah. about going someplace, you know, and we're, we're not able to. It's coming up on spring. Is it? Wait, are we done with spring break? See? It's gone. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> We've already had spring break. <laughs> when did we have it? What did we do? Where did we go? There's nothing to report. There's nothing to put up on Facebook. Hey, selfies, look at us, Myrtle Beach. None of that. So the few things that we've had, we've been able to uh, learn to balance those things. And what you said a minute ago, I want to go back to that Easter. Um, we were able to balance that out and to actually look at what Christ did for us every day. Yeah. And uh, it, it made more sense. It didn't jump just to the the um, the resurrection and the tomb is empty. Although that's what it's all about. That's what's wonderful. But there was a process 
that we needed to appreciate. Yeah, to and get so, to that place. it's so rich. The journey to the cross is so rich. And as a family, we were able to go day by day um, through this word, and it was very impactful for our family. Yeah. And what you said about some people experienced, uh, were brought up um, focusing on the lament portion, and others like ourselves were were um, focused on the resurrection. But um, I don't know if, I don't want to say that I was a, a victim of the way I was raised. That doesn't even sound nice. Some mm -hmm. folks, maybe, yeah, the way you're raised, but you're definitely um, a product. Yeah. So you're smart. I had to write that down. <laughs> I'm not a victim of the way I was raised, but I am a product of yes. how I was raised. And um, it's nice to uh, get other people's perspective and see maybe there's something I missed. Maybe there's something that I can uh, balance out of that. And that's um, what we were able to do through, through our time together. And I know it has been a time of being a alone. I saw, I guess we've already started now. We've already welcomed everybody and we're into this thing now. So, let's, so yeah. <laughs> let's just, let's just roll with it. Welcome everybody. So I was um, driving past uh, my son's school the other day. There's actually a school on the other side of the road. I think it's called Dutchman Creek Elementary. Um, and that's not where Walker goes. That was a street across. Uh, but as we drove by, I guess it was a couple of teachers. It was a couple of ladies, maybe mothers. But the, you know how they have the big uh, spirit rock now in front of most schools, the gigantic boulder out there and, and people it paint it and it's probably so eight yeah. inches thick in paint. Yeah. The layer around it is, is ridiculous. And usually every week you got a new kid with a birthday or, or some team that we're getting ready to play and, and trying to build spirit and, and community within the church, within the church, within the school and uh, get the kids fired up with that rock. It's pretty cool. Uh, and I actually enjoy looking at what the next thing is to come on it. But for um, uh, about 10 days ago, I guess, I saw two ladies painting it. And they had painted it all black, and they had started on some pink and white and red hearts. And it piqued my interest. I thought, where are we going with this? And uh, then uh, a day later, because I've been taking Walker out there to play basketball, uh, get some uh, good cultural distance basketball and exercise mm -hmm. going for us. But what they had painted on there was just uh, two words. It's what all these hearts around two words, and it said "alone together," mm -hmm. alone together. And I thought that's actually a pretty weak, pretty neat way to look at it. Um, we've been stripped down. We've come down to our bare essentials. Essentials is is a big word. I'm, I'm always like, what is the, since, since selfie made it into the dictionary, I'm always wondering every year, what's the new word that's going to make it into the dictionary? Well, this is an old word that we just haven't used it much, essentials. So we are down to the bare essentials yeah. and we are stripped down from everything in our lives. We're so busy. Mm -hmm. And I think that most of us can look at our lives and, and um, look at how too busy they were, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I'm probably guessing your life was too busy like my life was too busy. I'm ready to get some of that busy back, just being honest. But um, we, we've always talked about priorities, but now we've been stripped down to the point where we are at our priorities. We're finding out what our priorities are and maybe what our priorities were. And I've actually heard a lot of wonderful things that have come out of this. People are getting back to uh, family time yeah. together. People are getting back to family meals together. And people are getting back to family devotions. Those are some things that I'm going to, I'm just going to say, that since it's Easter still, Easter time still, those are things that have resurrected mm -hmm. or I mean, I, I want to think that we were all doing those like we should have been, but maybe, maybe we weren't, but we definitely, I've got report after report of, I'm redeeming this time. I know that's yes. the church word. I'm taking advantage. I, I'm using this time wisely. And, uh, uh, and you have to be real careful that I, I remember when this thing started, when, um, when we were 
decide, you know, all of a sudden we can't do this, we can't do this, we can't do this. My mind, so that I could keep sanity, went to my garage. Mm-hmm. My garage is my man cave. I had in my, I'm going to get these, all, all these nails and fasteners. I'm going to get them uh, lined up. I'm going to take all my tools off the wall. I'm going to separate and sort everything. My, my outdoor equipment, my hunting equipment, my fishing equipment. This deer hunting yes, equipment, thank you. turkey yes, hunting equipment. I wasn't throwing it away. I wasn't throwing yes, it away. The Lord wasn't throwing it away. Lord, away. <laughs> the Lord was in bringing <laughs> order to it. <laughs> Uh, because uh, Christine said something really important. I want to get to that. But but before I, I do, I want to say this. This is what happened with all that. Not much. Sadly to report, not much happened with that. And we have some very special friends that we talk to a lot. And he put parameters. He's really good about putting parameters. He, he's an incredible man uh, and, and, and his wife. They're incredible people. And Abel, you know how some people can just verbalize something and they can just conjugate a sentence and like, you just said what I was thinking, but I couldn't get it out. Uh, Well, they gave a definition to this thing and it was called uh, cultural survival. And, And this is what it meant. You've got all these plans to do something, but no energy to do it. Does that strike home with anybody? Um. You, you, you go into planning mode and you're all in, and you can even see, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. But then at the end, I get out there to do it and I've got no strength. I've got no mental right. capacity to do it. I'm just drained. And the reason is we're actually in survival mode. Every one of us are in survival mode and, and we're learning to how to navigate that now. So, yeah, maybe we're getting some things done now. But um, you said something I want you to just talk about. Uh, it was a while back, and we, we brought this to the people, and, and you just said something just so. I was like, wow, you have all these great things that pour out of you. And um, so I want, I want to capitalize on that this morning. You said um, everybody wants peace. Mm-hmm. People want peace right now. The whole world wants peace. But you said this, we want peace, but what we need is order. Right. Talk about that for a second. Well, it's just something I came to, you know, determine in my own life. Sometimes um, there would be a a sense of um, uh, upheaval or turmoil inside of me. And I would begin to search uh, what is wrong, you know, what what is wrong? Why do I have a lack of peace? And sometimes it, the Lord would show me that it was a spiritual issue or, or an issue that I could control. But raise your hand in the classroom if you can say, there are so many things I cannot control. <laughs> there are so many things. You can't control other people. You can't control situations. Um, you can only control yourself and your response. And you can be obedient to God and his word. But the thing that, that, uh, you know, a lot of times the house sometimes would feel like it was an, an upheaval and it, it wasn't that we needed peace. It was just that we needed order. Yeah. Many times John would walk into the house and his place of authority in our home as the head and, um, as the priest of our home would, would usher in order and it brings peace. So it's not always peace that you need. It's order. And I really think this time of quarantine has, you know, made us all um, evaluate our priorities. And we've talked about this before, but when you have priorities in your life, which we all need to articulate at some point, yeah. you need to, as a family, talk about, these are our core values as a family. These are our core beliefs. This is our code in our home, if you will. And um, I think that when we do that, when we set our priorities, then um, we were taught a wonderful principle. As you set your priorities, um, the the lesser priorities always serve the greater. Mm, supposed to. Supposed to. <laughs> and I think it's a good point for us to look at during this time is as I'm setting priorities, the lesser priorities always serve the Explain greater. Explain what that means just a little bit. Yeah. Well, just a, a simple example. You know, your priorities are probably a, um, a long list of six or seven, you know, things maybe, but just a simple version, you know, God, family, and my job. Um, 
you know, or, or however, however you articulate, let's just take those three. Um, so my family does not serve my job. My job serves my family. So at a point where I feel like my kids are a slave to my job, I need to reevaluate that. And it's not always a simple fix that you can fix overnight, but it is something that you want to be aware of. It is something that we want to be mindful of. My job does, my job serves my God. God doesn't serve my job. I don't fit God in, um, you know, my family serves God. So every priority serves up. And it's such a great visual for us to realize, um, you know, our friends, um, our family does not serve our friends. Our friends serve our family. Now, let me see Having it in the right there. order. Now, because God is first or is supposed to be, then your family, then your job. But you can't just use that as an excuse because um, as, as an employee, I'm a good employee because I serve God. Amen. Yeah, right. And because I serve God, I am a good employee. Now, I can't be a bad employee and take that as a liberty to make an excuse. Well, I need to let my family come first right here. And and while I'm letting my, my job fall apart you understand yeah, at, the same time, at the same time it's all about what we've been talking about yeah. at christ fellowship since january 1st literally over and over again and almost everything god keeps bringing the word up to our body of balance it's all about balance you can have just to, even in this situation we can be wise as serpents and harmless of doves we can have faith and we can have caution we can be powerful believers but we don't have to be weird yeah, it's, you know, not, it's, it's not a choice, either this or that. It's both. It's, it's able, both. Well, except for the real part, weird part. The no, weird part. No well, you, weird I'm a little weird. You're weird for sure. So I think it is. But we have talked before about how faith, amen, that one. faith and grief go hand in hand. Faith and loss go hand in hand. And we need to be comfortable with balance in our life. We don't have to be, you know, so far one way or the other. Yeah. So here's the thing. We want peace. But we need order. Um, peace follows order. And order doesn't follow peace. Peace follows order. Mm -hmm. Peace is a product of order. We talked a minute ago about um, uh, either being a victim or something or more aptly being a product of something. Mm -hmm. So if you want certain things in your life, if you want this result, you've got to do this thing beforehand so that you can get this result. There are results that everybody wants, and we're actually a result-driven society and a, a result-driven culture, and we're actually supposed to be that way. There are supposed to be some results in our lives. We're sure. not supposed to just always be in a process, but if we'll get the process right, then things will flow in the right direction in our lives. That's right, that's right, amen. So. Um, I, I want to share one thing. All right, go. Um, as we're talking about this, I want to tell you, um, you know, one of the people that we love to talk about most in the Bible is Paul. And I was looking at his life this week. And, you know, we're talking about priorities. And he was an incredible person who experienced miracles and healings and deliverance from, you know, miraculously from prison and all of these things. and. And at the end of his life, and I know Pastor has said this to us before, um, when someone is at the end of their life, listen to what they're saying because our last words have impact. It, it, when, when you realize you don't have a chance to say much more, you're going to say what's really inside of your heart. Um, and I wish we could get to the maturity in life that we could do that all along, yeah. that we don't wait till the last minute. But it is true that, you know, the, the heart of the matter comes out when we know that our time is limited. Well, Paul knew this. And at the end of his life, he didn't talk about the great miracles. He didn't emphasize the great power that followed his ministry because it was down on the priority list. Um, what he said was, I have run the race. I have fought the fight. 
and I have kept the faith. So at the at the end of it, only one event was worthy of of his life's encapsulating, um, you know, the mission of his life, and that was the gospel. And so um, the end of it, not the miracles, not the visions, not being caught up in heaven. It was I have kept the faith, and it made me wonder. Wow, he was so. It, it wasn't because of the circumstances. He had many um, challenges and his circumstances were were difficult. He spent time in prison and he probably thought, wow, you know, what am I doing here? But he used that time um, to further the gospel. He had faith to endure. And I think that's what really stuck out with to me. Um, and even with all of this, we've probably said, oh man, you know, in isolation, like Paul was in prison, I can't eat out. I can't go see friends. I can't go to school like normal. I can't keep my normal schedule. But how many of us have said, oh, this quarantine is really hampering my discipleship. Like I can't share the gospel. And it, wow, it just struck me that I, I want to have that passion that it is an essential thing in a believer's life to share the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to lose that. I want to come out of this realizing that is my mission, not even to shepherd people as much as it is to disciple and to win the lost. And Paul got that at the end yeah. of his life. That's what he said, that I had faith to endure. I had faith to endure every hardship and I had faith to the end to mm -hmm. To understand that I kept the faith, I kept sharing the faith. I kept, and I wonder if we see that as believers, that sharing the gospel is essential to who we are. It, and limits, um, not putting limits on ourselves. Do you realize that Paul, uh, a lot of his Christian life was spent in prison. The last couple of years of his life was in house prison. Right. And, uh, but he actually found himself. He ended up in a place that he had sent people to. <laughs> you know that Paul sent people to prison and he sent people to the grave. And Paul was a bad man when he was Saul. He was a really bad man. and uh, But he didn't get stuck in that. He remembered that. He right. remembered um, his past failures. And, and he said that, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm chief among sinners. He realized that he had done it wrong. But he also, when he found himself in the place that he had sent people to, he redeemed that time. He didn't get mad at God. Yeah. He did not say, God, why am I here? Why am I in a jail? Mm -hmm. He took where he was at and, and took the limits off of it yeah. and used that and redeemed that. So I, I believe that right now, the time we find ourselves in a place, nobody, this time last year, this time uh, a few just a few weeks ago, uh, a month or so ago, you would have never thought that we would have been in a place like this. No, nobody could have predicted this, but here we are. But what are we doing to redeem out of it? What are we going to do with this situation? I, I believe that um, that we've had some epiphanies during this time. It's it's not a bad thing to have a long time and to sit down and think. And uh, almost you feel like you're going stir crazy or cabin fever or whatnot. You want to get out. But I've had a couple of epiphanies during this. And uh, what is an epiphany? Epiphany is an aha moment, a an aha moment. Th this is um, the definition. One of the definitions of it is the moment when a character is suddenly struck with a life changing realization, which changes the rest of the story. So you've got a choice um, when the aha moment comes to you. Um, I, I, I like to think of the prodigal son. I think most of you probably know that story, so I'm not going to rehash all of that. But there was uh, in Luke chapter 15 and verse 17, uh, the prodigal son had been given all, had asked for all of his uh, share of his father's riches. And that was all of his share, according to the Bible. So it was a great deal. And he, what did he do with it? He went off and squandered it. Mm -hmm. And then he found himself alone feeding pigs. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was so hungry that he wanted to eat what he was feeding the pigs. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody even gave him that much. He, would, he, he had wasted it all. And he had 
come to this point in his life, all of a sudden he's wanting to eat what the pigs are eating, and he has this epiphany. The Bible says in Luke 15 and 17 that, that it says when he came to himself, that's that's the epiphany moment in my life. You ever come to yourself? You have, like for me, it'd be like John. Have you, have you ever got to to a pl- place in your life where all of a sudden you're doing something and you check up on yourself? Like John, what are you doing? Yeah. That's an epiphany moment, and you decide from that place right there. The the prodigal son said, "What am I doing? I'm wanting to eat slop. I'm only wanting to eat the husk." of the corn, not even the corn, not even the cob, the husk. Right. Like, what nutrition is in that? The nasty part. He was, that's what you call starving, Jack. That's right. starving right there. You're not Jack. <laughs> but anyway, he was. He wanted it so bad, all of a sudden he had this epiphany, he had this thought of reality, like he came to himself like, prodigal son, <laughs> even my dad's servants have food to eat and to spare. And I'm about to eat this stuff right here. And uh, so he found his way back home. So that changed the course of his story, his story, his story, history. We're making history right now. My story, your story. What kind of epiphany moment are you having right now during this uh, time of isolation? Because there's something I promise you to redeem out of it. Amen. Yeah. Maybe not. Um. Maybe not what you're going to do different so as so much as what has what has um, resurrected in this. What are you going to take yeah. moving forward? Because we said it's been stripped down. Let me tell you some things that have been stripped down. Our entertainment. Who who would have who would have thought? It's like I'm going to publish it. Who would have thought that our entertainment would go away so quickly? Mm-hmm. College sports, professional sports, local sports, local sports. Any sports. Concerts. Concerts. So, so I mean, anything for entertainment has been stripped away. we got to entertain ourselves. Let me tell you something else that's been stripped away. Our vanity. Mm-hmm. I haven't, look at my nails. I haven't, been, <laughs> I haven't been able to get my nails done in 53 years. You don't want to see, you don't want to take my shoes no, off. No, better yet, look at mine. I just soaked mine off yesterday. Sister, <laughs> sister girl here had them he hands wrapped in aluminum, aluminum foil, foil and acetone. She yes, looked like I had to take them off. She looked like a crash test dummy of Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> it, them hands had been in a wreck, yeah. but um, but 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 our vanity is gone. You know, Haircuts, we can't go. We can't color. Get, I all my waxing. beautiful locks that I had before this, you know, my just beautiful locks, they had, I had to just cut it all away. <laughs> just I'm down to this now. But our vanity is gone. Honestly, our, our, our entertainment is gone. Our vanity is gone. Uh, what, what else ha- has been stripped away? Thing after thing after thing has been stripped away. So many, so many things are, are reduced now. So moving forward. I'm not saying that, oh, I realized I don't need it. I'm not saying that at all. But I've realized maybe there needs to be more balance to this thing. Maybe there needs to be, I have found some peace in my home because some, some order has happened because some of the things that I let be big in my life didn't need to be so big. They've been not just chopped down, they've been cut out. And I'm not saying I, that, that, that they're going to go away. I mean, if I told this woman that she wasn't ever going to get her nails done. I'll be all right. But you get the nails done. You're going, you, you going back, honey. You're going but back. I am you going back. going back. And, uh, and I'm going to watch the Clemson Tigers whoop up on somebody because they're just going to. I believe that day's coming back. <laughs> But um, anyway. Yeah, but also there's been a real joy in the simplicity of it and, and in the stripping down of it. There's been such a, um, I think those things can be very distracting. We have a lot of distractions in our life. Yeah. And when we strip Too away many. distraction, it really reveals some precious things. And, and again, it's about balance. It's not about being distracted all of the time. and. It's not about, you know, this intense opportunity that we have to focus. It's about both. It's about being circumspect 
the Bible says that we should be circumspect. And what that means is walking daily, considering the outcome of every decision, every, every situation and every decision. So before I make it. So that's the thing. It, I think it has made us more sober mm -hmm. and that we can walk circumspectly, that we can consider the outcomes of something before we make that decision, yeah. good and bad. And I, I want to say this, as, as it makes me think um, what is really important in my life, I have honestly thought um, the entertainment thing, that's not what I really miss. I miss the fellowship. Mm -hmm. I miss the people. Mm -hmm. I miss the touch. Yeah, I was thinking last night, you know, it's not the church service that I miss. It's the church people that I miss. Um, you know, Jesus could have stood on a rock and just talked to thousands and thousands of people each day. They would have listened and they would have come and they would have been changed. But he chose to go to the one. Yeah constantly he chose to stop everything and go to the one that's what being a believer is about and that's what our hearts miss is the unity of the body and that's when we come together yes we worship together yes we hear god's word but we touch one another yeah. we touch each other's situations we touch each other's lives we touch each other physically yeah. so you know um i just think that part of it is um is what my heart longs for the most you know this and it's a beautiful thing that we have been shown that the the church is not confined to a building that we are the people of God. And I, again, I think it stokes the fire of discipleship, that our job is not just to get together and to worship together and to fellowship together, but it is to make disciples. And I pray that that will be stirred in our hearts, that we will grow the body of Christ as a whole all across this nation, because our hearts are focused on what being a believer is and what our true mission is. So, yeah. yeah, and you truly don't know what you have and appreciate what you have until it's stripped away from you. Just like your health. If you lose your health, if you get to the place where you can't get up, you can't move and do the things that you once did, you will certainly realize how many things that you took for granted. And um, I, I just want to come out of this with, a, I believe that we're all going to come out of this with a greater appreciation for each other in our time together and how valuable it is. And, and I said something uh, weeks ago that I didn't know how it was going to happen, but I said, I, I believe that I, I wrote it down. Where did I write it? Right here. Church is going to become your excuse to miss everything else. Yeah. When I grew up, that's the, the biggest thing we did was church. Yeah, and we had it all too. the time. And my dad was the preacher and I went to everything. I even went to the ladies auxiliary meeting. Y'all don't even know what an auxiliary is anymore. But that's when all the ladies got together. And I don't know, they always had something to eat. And that was <laughs> enough reason for me to go. But as kids, um, our moms were in one building and we were out there playing in the grass and playing football and baseball, whatever, anything we could play tag or you know whatever uh whatever it was but uh, church was our our default i mean we when we didn't know where we, where we were going to end up we defaulted we ended up at the church we just end up there and i found myself listen this morning um, i'm an early riser by nature but I was up at 4.45 and I know there's, there's those times when I feel like I can get back to sleep and sometimes I'll give it one shot. But I usually know, John, you ain't going back to sleep. And I'll get up and I'll start studying or something. I did that this morning. I got up and studied for a little while. and and uh, But about six o'clock, I decided I'm right over to the church. I went over to the church and I saw the sunrise and, and it was a beautiful morning. I know the sun's not out right now, but it was a beautiful morning. It was cold. It, it, it was a bit nippy out there, but I went to the church. I went to the church this week and I cut the grass and it looks beautiful. And uh, matter of fact, me and Walker had to run back over to the church before uh, we got on uh, Facebook Live this morning. Real quick, we had to run over to pick up something from the church and, and Walker rode with me. And I said, Walker, look at that grass. Doesn't the church look nice? And he's like, Dad, it looks beautiful out here. I said, well, hopefully, you know, real soon we're going to be able to, to uh, be out here again. 
But uh, I'm believing that what I had said as a statement that, that I hope that church would become our excuse to miss everything else, I think that's actually going to happen. I think church is going to be our new excuse to miss everything else. Because let's be honest, uh, can we stand to be blessed? If the things that we have keep us, start taking us away from the one who gave us the thing, things get out of order real quick. And if things get out of order real quick, peace. you can say that you want peace, but you're not going to have it. Because peace is a product of order. That's right. And God wants us to have order in our life. And I believe that day's coming back. Yeah, me too. So me too. I'm excited for that. Let's pray. Yeah, let's pray. Yeah. Father, I thank you for who you are in our lives. I thank you for your word. And I thank you that you don't bend. Um, we can say a thing and we can claim peace and we can want peace. But you don't bend your rules for what we want. You are a God of order. And your peace comes to us when we have established order in our lives. And God, I believe that this time, as we redeem this time, we're going to reestablish order in our lives. And priorities are going to line up the right way. That God, you are first in our lives, and then our family. And then the other things, God, they all come underneath that. Even the ministry comes underneath our family. We've got to be able to take care of our own home first. And we are, we are to be to the praise of your glory. Your word says that, that we are to be a recognition of you. We are to be a reflection of you. We are actually to be a representation of you. Paul, that we talked about earlier, Paul said this. He said that our words have become like the words of the Lord. How do we get to that? Well, we become a representation of you. Yes. In other words, it's like saying representing God. Yes. No, we're not God, but you are, and you live inside of us. That's the mystery of the kingdom, Christ inside of us. Yes. So as we are to the praise of your glory, we actually represent you we represent you everywhere we go and we can do that it's not just a place of maturity that's unattainable we've all had those people in our lives it seems like every time we get around them they lift us up because they are representing you in our lives god let that be our goal let that be what we strive for and what we work towards and actually it will begin to flow out of us as we get the order right, there's, even our presence will be peaceful to other people. God, there's been times in our lives when we should have been falling apart, but we weren't Amen. because we had the order right. It wasn't anything that we did except for we had obedience to your word. Amen. Yes. And God, help us with that. It is, yes. it is an incredible blessing that your Holy Spirit will speak to us. What an incredible honor it is that your Holy Spirit speaks to us. Yes, but the true blessing comes when we listen to what you say yes. and when we obey yes. what you say, the yes. blessing is in its fullness. Yes, and we thank you for that. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Thank you. God, thank you that you sustained us. Yes. You got us this far. We see light in this tunnel. Yes. And it's growing ever bright. Thank and we're going to come out of this. God, I'm believing that we're going to be the effective people that you want us to be. Yes. That we are actually going to affect change yes. in our communities, yes. in our counties, mm -hmm. in our cities, in our states, and across this world. It's got to start yes. somewhere, God. Yes. Let it start with us. Yes. We thank you for it. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. I bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So good to be with you guys. We love you. Love you. And uh, hope you have a wonderful week. Yes. We'll be talking to you soon. Bye-bye.